What's up guys, welcome to new Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. Today I'm shooting how to use the physics constraints component. It's gonna be a very easy to follow, so let's get started. All right, so the physics constraint component is basically a component that will allow uh, different objects to be attached together, for example, like together in a string or something like that, basically constrained to objects. And the possibilities are very high. You can control the position, rotation, and so on of different you know, types of objects. You will see uh, an example in a second. Uh, so what we're going to do is just go ahead and create a new uh, actor blueprint class. So I can just drag it to the scene and it will work. Uh, but of course you can also set it up in the scene to decide. Uh, it's going to be just uh, example. It doesn't matter the name for here. Um, but let's go ahead and open this up. Uh, a thing that I'm gonna later also show you quickly is that you can also uh, make it through blueprints. So it will be interesting. Anyway, so the first thing that we are gonna add is a the first static mesh, and, and let's call this the master. In this case, this is gonna be like the parent object, and then the other object will basically be uh, constrained into that master object. Uh, so for example, let's see if I go into the sorry content and props, we're gonna have some uh, props in here that we can use. As an example, of course, you will use this in your case, um, but in my case, what I want to do is get this lamp, okay? and then get this statue and what i'm going to do is simulate that this uh, statue is a bulb and it's like hanging broken from the lamp uh, it's a t you know i didn't find any other props so but it, you know i think it's a, a quick example used to get uh, into the idea you know uh, so we're gonna get this lamp and put it here so this will be the parent okay this will be basically the uh, the one that the bulb will be attached into so let's say that you know, let's imagine it doesn't have a bulb and the bulb will be another component, which let me duplicate this and this will be the child. Okay. And this child will be basically the statue, which of course is not a bulb, but you get the idea, right? It would kind of be of a bulb. So in my case, I'm going to place a bit down 180 degrees and also make it smaller and then you just put it like hanging, let's say in a distance around here. So imagine uh, there will not be any cable, but you could imagine then the cable once the physics are on. You will see what I mean in a second. Anyway, so once we have the two objects I want to, of course, constrain together, we have to do is go here and add the physics constraint component. We just press enter, and then we'll have a few uh, variables over here. Well, a whole bunch of them. Um, so the first thing I want to do is go up here, and then you will see the component name one and component name two. So basically, the component name one will be the master the parent the one that the component name two will be attached into in our case the parent basically will be our master so we have to touch it uh, so touch it not <laughs> type it exactly like this as you can see we already have a gizmo and then for my uh, component two this will be the child and there we go you can see that now we have the two boxes and then we can see some gizmos over here and the line connecting each other Great. Uh, so another thing that we want to see is that uh, if we select the physics constraint, we can see the pivot. And right now it's used in zero zero. But if I were to put this down, uh, you can see that the line will only reach into that point. So basically, this is like the attaching point. In our case, my attaching point will be right over here, basically in the uh, right next to the bulb place, right? Uh, so that's where I want to put this guy over here. And immediately this should work. But there's one more thing that we have to do just to make sure that it has physics. And let's go into the child and go and of course say simulate physics. If not, uh, it will just be there standing still and we have errors because it doesn't work like that. Physics constraint needs a child that has physics because of course it should like move freely and so on. Uh, now for the master, you don't need to have physics and that's it. Uh, because of course it's going to be fixed in the place. The one interacting is the child. Uh, yeah, so we can just go ahead and get our blueprint example. Just drag it here. Let's move it up, and then we have this over here. So let me just uh, press play. Uh, so now I can just go here, and you see the bulb. But when I okay, it's it's very not very tall. Let me put it up here. All right, maybe that's a bit better. So I can go here and with my head, <laughs> you can see I bumped into it, and I was moving with physics, and that's really looking pretty pretty cool. Of course. And you know, the bulb is not the best example, but you get the idea. Um, it should also make low, you know, you get the idea. But um, you can see how now, if I'm up again, it's like if it's attached. 
constrained to that object. So everything is working perfectly. If you want, you can separate the object a bit more down and leave the pivot of the physics constraint here. You can see the it will automatically update and so on. And you can see the difference in position here. So great. Now, let me go ahead and quickly show you some of the options that we have up here. So uh, first of all, we have the disable collision. Basically, this is the collision between the two objects. So basically, if the two objects will be able to collide. In this case, we're just going to go ahead and leave it like this. Because, for example, if it launches into the air, it will be cool if it bounced with the other one and so on. Then the parent dominates. Basically, imagine that the child will have a sort of motion and uh, the uh, parent, the master, will also have physics. Uh, similarly, physics on. So, for example, if the child has a bigger motion, uh, would it move the, the parent or not so if you send uh, if you sorry not send but take this and basically the parent would not move it will be fixed there and it will not be affected by the child whatsoever um so you, know, you can leave that uh, for you we, you know we have more things uh projection don't worry about that and a more sharp propagation don't worry about that uh, but now we have the linear limits and the angle limits. These are kind of important things. So you can see that we have the x, y, and z axis. And basically, this is um, basically the location itself, like when the object will be transformed. Uh, right now, it is locked. Um, but you can have, basically set it as free or limited. So it's pretty much how um, it will be able to move. Right. So, for example, if it was limited, maybe it only will be able to move until here, maybe, or until here. You know? uh, and then if it's locked, of course, it will mainly be attached into that, and you get the idea. Now, if we go down into agar limits, this is basically pretty much the angles that the constraint can move on. You can see different axes over here, interpreted in gizmos. So, for example, if I were to put this one unlocked, it will disappear. So, now the constraint child will not be able to you know, move in between that angles. But if we set this first one, for example, to free, you can see that now the constraint will be able to move in and rotate, basically, well, mainly the angle rotation is in rotation. Uh, so, it will be able to rotate in that axis. But then set the other one, it will be able to rotate like this. And then lastly, the other one, basically like this. So you get the idea, right? And the more free, the more free. Well, basically free is that there's no limit. But if we go, for example, and set this one to locked and this one to limit, so we can see uh, it will only be able to rotate in that angle. So basically you get the idea. In my case, again, it's a little bit free. And that's pretty much it. And then we have more options that we don't have to touch right now. But you get the idea on how this works and how we could basically interpret it. Um, so yeah, you can basically play with settings in order to get what you want. Now, there's a thing that I want to lastly touch, like I mentioned at the start, and it's basically you can also do this through blueprints. So imagine that if we go into here and you want to basically attach an actor dynamically if you collide with it or something like that, what you would do is go to physics and traits and then set constraints, components. And then basically in here, you can set up the nodes. So in here, you will pass on your uh, the component one, which remember the component one will always be the master, the parent. So here, for example, you would like to pass the player hand. And then in the component two, you would like maybe to have that object that you have just picked. And then if you want, you can even put bones. So we'll attach into the character's hand and then into another bone, whatever you like. But basically, uh, you know, that you can also go ahead and do so from <coughs> Sorry about coughing uh, inside the blueprints and it's very useful. So for example dynamically in the uh, Runtime you collide with an object you can attach into the object while playing the game so on so there's a lot of uh, There's basically not a lot of limitations here. It's very uh, universal and you can do a lot of things with it uh, So with those I said guys if you enjoyed the video and how found it helpful I really appreciate you like video and subscribe to my channel I have lots of Unreal Engine 5 tutorials and videos so if you want to check them out go ahead join my Discord server talk with the other devs ask questions share your progress and your games and so on and now yes with all I said bye bye